Let's pick a random product from Amazon and let's make this in Blender from scratch. If you can do what I'm about to do, there's gonna be a lot of people willing to pay you money for this. Now I'm going to speed run this, but if this tutorial is too fast for you, all of this is in my Blender ebook. Check it out, the link is below. First, I'm going to pull up PureRef. I'll copy this image and paste it into this little canvas. If you want to follow along and you don't have this program installed, just go to Google, type in PureRef, hit download, figure it out, you'll be all right. And now you can place pictures on your screen as you're working in Blender. I'm going to put this image over my outliner, or maybe I'll just throw it on the second screen because you can get your own picture. And I'll pull it back in from time to time if I have to. And now I'm going to delete the default cube, shift A, add a new cube, lift it up, scale it up by 3x on the x-axis, lift this up, give me a loop cut down here and we're going to scale it up on the y-axis to get the shape of a purse. I'll delete the face at the top and now select these two faces and these two, inset them with I, uncheck bevel and now scale these down on the x-axis so they move inwards. We can also scale them down a little bit on the y-axis. With control 1 I'll add a subdivision surface modifier, maybe give me 2 or even 3. Now I want 3 loop cuts like this because that turns this face down here into squares and I want 2 loop cuts up here for the same reason. I'll make the base a little bit wider. Maybe give me another loop cut down here so I can make this shape a little bit tighter. In that case, I also need one more loop cut here. And since I want to keep everything squares, I'll also add more loop cuts here. Another loop cut like this and like this. Now we can have a little bit more control over this shape. Also subdivided from this side. And next I want to cut out some shapes from the top to get this little dent here. Delete these two vertices. Select these four and scale them up on the x-axis. Then I'll select these two sides. Deselect the edges on the inside. Extrude right click, lift them up a little bit. And now this is very roughly the shape that I want here. Now I'll just have to bend this so it looks more natural. To bend this, I'm going to activate my proportional editing so I can make smooth adjustments to this shape. Then I'll select these two vertices and scale them inwards on the y-axis. Maybe it'll be better if I select these vertices down here as well and then scale them all in together. Then I'll take these edges from over here and scale them out a little bit. Push these apart so we got a softer edge on the side. And now I want to take these corners here and pinch them together so it looks like this bag is closed at the top. Now I'm trying to correct the flow of edges around this hole, but I think it's kind of better if it looks a little bit beat up and random. It just makes it look more natural. So now I'll just take this bottom face loop, scale it up on the x-axis, and with shift D I'm gonna duplicate this and throw it into the side like this, just so I have a little backup in case I fuck something up here. I'll pull these edges down a bit, and I think this is pretty good shape for now. With a solidify modifier, I'm going to add a little bit of thickness to this bag. We're gonna set that to something like 0 0.04, 0 0.05, somewhere in that ballpark, and then we can start adding some of the other details around this bag. Let's start by adding these metal pieces at the top which hold the handle. Select these four faces, shift D, separate them to new object, get rid of the solidify modifier, Fire. No, undo. We're going to duplicate the entire bag, get rid of the solidification, apply the subdivision surface modifier. We're going to take some faces from here, over there on the other side, also on this side over here and in the back as well. Control I, delete all the other faces. Now these little surfaces conform to the surface of the bag, but we're just going to turn them into this square or rectangle shape that we need for this little handle thing. So K, knife cut right here, make that straight. Also on this side, let's also make some cuts at the top like this and from the bottom as well. Now we can get a nice rectangular shape. Control I to delete everything around it. 3D cursor in the middle of the bag. With Shift D we're gonna duplicate this across the 3D cursor and mirror it over to the other side. I think we can just work on one of these and then copy it into all the other places later. Select these edges, loop tool space, extrude out, Alt S we're gonna inflate this a little bit. Place the origin of this object exactly in the middle of the world. Delete all these others, add modifier, generate, mirror, X and Y axis simultaneously. Now give me a subdivision surface modifier, select all the edges around the top, all the edges around the bottom and these edges on the side in the back, mean crease one, slide these edges inwards like this and also these on the other side, then slide them both backwards a little bit like this. Now place my 3D cursor on this vertex with Shift S, select these two faces, set the transform orientations to normal, set the pivot point to 3D cursor, activate the shear tool, and now we're going to shear this to create this little cutoff part at the bottom. Move this shit out of the way, adjust some of the vertices individually if we have to, extrude this out, then push everything back out so it sticks to the surface perfectly, remove these creases, and correct them down here at the bottom. We can also extrude this through to the other side like this, crease this, extrude this above the top, select top surface, back surface, and also some shit from the side like this. I to inset, adjust this, get rid of this crease, add a crease back here, crease this, remove this crease, crease this down here, remove this crease, do the same shit here on the other side. We gotta adjust some of the geometry here in the front to get a better curve here. We can't walk around with bad topology. Thomas Colin is watching. We complicated this a little bit too much for no reason, but whatever, it's gonna look good anyway. Take these faces, extrude it up. Let's start removing the creases now and using some bevels instead. I'm gonna select a bunch of shit that I want to sharpen around this shape. Control B, let's get some bevels going. Whatever, it looks all right from a distance. And now we just need a little cylinder in here. Let me 16 vertices. Scale that down. Flip it sideways. Rotate it so it's placed like this. Loop cut right here. Bevel it. Extrude this up. Lift it up to around here somewhere. Loop cut down here. 
scale to minus one of the z-axis also two loop cuts like this select this select this loop tools circle make this a bit thicker like this now we're going to enter local side view like this duplicate these circles and place them somewhere around here place the cursor in the middle here give me this alt e spin i want minus 180 degrees also on the top side and now we got a little loop we just gotta clean this shit up a little bit somehow some way let's bridge edge loops on these two segments scale them down a bit on the local z-axis like this same thing for these correct the normals remove the doubles and now we got some kind of loop here which we can use to attach the handle now it's not exactly what we were supposed to make i fucked it up a little bit but it's all right shift a give me a plane flip it sideways scale it down scale it up like this bevel this extrude this out delete this face delete these vertices control one couple of loop cuts up here apply the subdivision surface modifier object convert curve curve properties geometry bevel increase the depth to something like this give me some more space between the geometry so we don't get no twisting go back to object convert mesh subdivision surface give me a couple more loop cuts scale these apart to make this a bit wider just to change the shape a little bit two loop cuts up here alt s to inflate them a bit whatever object shades move and now we can attach a handle here before we start doing anything fancy let's copy this to all the other places where we have these little clips here cursor in the middle shift d duplicate this bring it over to the other side shift d again this time x-axis now we got all this going on now let's try to add some leather to connect these place the 3d cursor right here shift a curve path rotate that sideways give me front view lift it up like this and let's just bend that into shape until we get this kind of curve up here it doesn't have to be anything crazy something like this will do it maybe a little bit bigger and maybe a little bit wider if you want to i think this looks pretty reasonable let's also lean it backwards a little bit like this down here near these little rings we're going to go to front view and extrude this so it kind of wraps around this little ring and it goes underneath make sure your geometry is highly concentrated around here so you don't bend anything else up here it's going to have to be something like this then we can bring it back here bring it very close over here to this side we should probably assume a little bit of thickness so let's move this apart a little bit more now we're going to bring this up to somewhere around here i don't feel like doing that again so let's just delete this side duplicate this scale it to minus one of the x-axis and bring it over here to the other side and place it correctly fill this now we can use this to create some straps give me a little bit of depth on this curve duplicate it in case we fuck up again object convert mesh we should have probably added more depth because watch what i'm about to do object convert mesh bevel the sides give me some loop cuts around the sides like this make sure to do that on both sides slide this slide this slide this and slide this inverted shit whatever's going on down there we're gonna get rid of that get rid of all this nonsense looks like everything got fucked up we got to get rid of a whole bunch of geometry that's fine once we got that under control now we just got two little tapes now we can just bridge edge loops connect the two sides and now we got a little tape of leather let's bevel all these sharp edges just for shading purposes select this select all this shift d separate that to new object delete the inside geometry fill this fill this fill this fill this bridge edge loops now we got a little ring around here give me some subdivision surface extrude alt s bevel all this duplicate this extrude alt s bevel the sharp edges this is gonna be some type of little gold or something shade smooth now i want to make some kind of a semicircle here so i'll align my view with this face with shift 7 place the cursor right there give me this alt e spin 180 give me less steps something like six five four bring this in a little bit snap these vertices into place so they connect we're gonna use a 3d cursor for that with shift s snap here snap this there snap here snap this there and so on until this connects now we just gotta do a couple of loop cuts on the inside and outside fill this fill this fill this fill this fill this fill this there you go when we add some subdivision this is gonna look cute if we even want to add subdivision slide this up a little bit control e mark seam let's delete the entire other side duplicate everything and bring it over there make sure the 3d cursor is up here in the middle now we're gonna take this selection duplicate separate to new object alt s to inflate it like this now we got this sticker strap which is the part that you're holding with your hand not you but your female is holding it if your female makes you carry her purse you're a punk if that upsets you don't watch my videos give this a little bit of thickness maybe not all the way through but at least on the ends here so it looks like there's a bit of thickness bevel the ends and now i realized all of this is way too thin so we're gonna select everything scale it up on the local y-axis to make it a bit fatter and now we just gotta add a couple more finer details let me go get some more coffee and then i'll show you how to do that all right, check this out. At the side of this purse, there's this extra little metal bit, but we have to pinch this and pull it out. I'm going to select six faces over here, inset with I, scale this down and slide it up a little bit. Scale this down. And now we can select these faces at the top here, pull them out like this, pull the middle edge a little bit further out like this. Let's make some more space here so we don't have this clipping. Scale this up a bit more. Also push this out a little bit further. And I think we should probably reduce the thickness a little bit so we can bring these a little bit closer together. Add another loop cut right here. Take these 
these two edges from the sides, scale them down a bit on the y-axis, also bring these a bit closer. And before you know it, we got a nice little pinch up here where we can add this extra metal piece. So let's take some of this geometry, shift D, separate it to new object, slide this up. Alt S, we're going to inflate this because it still has the solidify modifier, but we're going to reduce the thickness on the solidify modifier. We're gonna try to straighten this out a little bit more, tighten up the corners at the end here. And before you know it, we got a cool piece of metal. Give me some more loop cuts like this so I have squares on the side here. Select these faces, inset with I, loop tool circle, give me some holes right here. Maybe just for decoration, we're also going to inset this, slide this backwards, and slide this forwards, delete this. I don't know what this was supposed to be, but it turned out all right. We're just gonna leave it there. Give me a cylinder straight through this at the back here. Flip that sideways, of course. Bevel the sides like this, scale down the ends, bevel them again, duplicate this cylinder and bring it up here. Shade smooth, and let's get a ring going through here. Select this hole, select this hole, be the separate to new object. With individual origin, scale all this to zero, merge by distance, extrude it out on the x-axis like this, fill, fill back here, scale this down, and lower it down to around here somewhere. Give me some more supporting geometry here so we can tighten up this curve. Object, convert, curve, curve properties, round, round bevel. Let's get a little bit of thickness going there. Convert this back to a mesh. And now let's create this hook where we can attach this other strap that goes around your shoulder, presumably. So to do that, first we need this little hook. Shift A mesh, give me a circle. Let's do 12 vertices. Bring it out here, top view. Delete one half, extrude this out, scale it down. Fill back here, give me face, grid fill, select this surface and inset it, delete faces, subdivision surface modifier, extrude this up like this, let's bevel some of the sharp edges, control B, select two edge loops like this, deselect half of each edge loop and select the edges between them, control B to bevel, X delete faces, fill the insides here, bevel the sharp edges. I don't feel like doing the same down here, so let's just bevel this, extrude, alt S, loop cut here, loop cut here, object, shade smooth. Maybe we can do some more subdivision surface if we really want this to look good. Select a surface at the end here on both sides. I to inset loop tools circle inset extrude apart scale down like this take these edges around these circles extrude them inwards delete the faces on the inside bevel the sharp edges select the surface back here inset loop tools circle scale down extrude out loop cut here loop cut here go to side view select four faces like this on both sides inset with i w loop tools bridge loop cut here loop cut here control b select this and select this control b to bevel that's it we got a hook let's run that through this little loop back here place the cursor right here snap that back there scale this down rotate it into place take some edges from over here shift these separate them to new object turn that into a face scale it up on the local y-axis extrude it down delete the front and the back face bevel these edges here extrude alt s also bevel these down here but with a sharper bevel object shade smooth and now we just got to use another curve to make the leather part shift a curve path pull this down here somewhere like this bring it over to the front let's make it hang all the way down to the bottom extrude it up over here over here like this then it's supposed to go somewhere over the top let's adjust just this bring it over the back then it goes back here like this down to the floor again and then it curves back up here to the other side where it's also going to connect to the same shit which we created over on that side it's gonna be something like this approximately but first let's delete one half of this handbag duplicate everything shift the scale to minus one of the x-axis correct the normals duplicate all of this junk and bring it over there place the 3d cursor at the bottom of this little loop snap the last vertex of this curve to that and that's approximately the path that this strap is supposed to follow we're gonna make a few more minor adjustments to this shape and duplicate this just in case add a little bit of depth to this curve like this it's supposed to be approximately this wide now convert that back to a mesh bevel the edges get rid of the other edge loops in fact we should probably just use a 2d surface for now bring that through here through the loop over to the other side down here and then it's stitched somewhere around here this is the same thing over here on the other side and now let's give this a little bit of thickness subdivision surface while we're at it bevel the sharp edges and now we're almost done with the model let's copy this handle and bring it over here to the other side i'm going to take these faces from up here on these handles right in the middle shift D separate that to new object subdivide those faces loop tool circle scale them up individually extrude out inset alt s select all the sharp edges bevel all the sharp edges now we got these little eyelets we're gonna parent all that to the handle and now we got these eyelets right here now the model's more or less done let's add a couple of textures let me tell you how to very accurately place stitches onto your model without increasing the polygon count. So we're not going to model these stitches, we're going to make the model look like there are stitches, and we're going to do this by texturing the model. Here is how you do that properly. Switch to the shading workspace. We're gonna add a new material right here to this handle and let's name that stitches. Now in my boot tutorial, which you can find on my channel, I showed you how to create a normal map for a single stitch like the one that you can see right here. I'm 
going to drag and drop this normal map into my material. I'll set the color space to non-color, give me a normal map node, plug the color into color, plug the normal into normal. Let's get some color going, let's make this brown for now, but we can always change that later. And now we have to decide where we're going to place these stitches. I want them to be on the inside of the handle like this on these two face loops which you can see selected right here. So I'm going to select those two face loops and I'll deselect everything from the end here where I don't want to have any stitches. With Control E I'm going to mark seams while this is selected, then press U, unwrap and now let's pull up the UV editor right here. As you can see all of these faces are unwrapped individually and they are arranged in a certain pattern. Now these are unwrapped into separate islands so with L I'm going to select some of these over here on this side and in face select mode I'll use my brush tool to select all the others. R minus 90 degrees, place it on top of this other map. Now switch to individual origins and scale everything way up. We're gonna make all these faces as big as possible, then select all the vertices in this corner, go back to medium point, scale to zero, do the same on this corner and also on the other two corners on this side. Now we can scale this back down and now the individual UV map for each of these faces is exactly in the same place, which means every face is going to have exactly the same texture, which means the stitch is going to appear the same way on every single face, which means it's going to be arranged perfectly. So rotate by 90 degrees and you can already see where we're getting at with this. We just have to do some minor corrections now. We're going to align it with the top of the image like this, then take the geometry from the bottom and align it with the bottom of the image. And now you can see what I'm talking about. We might have to shift this left and right so that some of these inverted faces also align. Then with control I, I'll invert the selection and all the other faces I'm just going to place somewhere here on the side so that the normal map on everything else is going to look nice as well. Now it wouldn't be a bad idea to get some texture for the bottom of these holes here. Here's how I'm going to do that. I'll open up this stitch in paint net, give me a new layer. I want my brush tool. I'll copy the hex code of the color of the handle, paste that here into color. I'll make that a little bit darker and I'll use that to paint right over the stitch like this. Then on a new layer below that, I want a bigger brush tool, which is as big as the hole or maybe a little bit smaller. I want black, reduce the hardness a little bit and we're going to make a black spot right here in this hole. The surrounding area has to have the exact same color as this handle here. Now we can flatten this, save as. We're gonna bring this into Blender as well. Plug that into color and this is already UV mapped and that's how you get your stitches. If you're not happy with the size of the stitches, for example, they're too big right now, you can take all the faces which have stitches, go to the UV editor, press S, 2, now the UV map is twice as big, which means now we're fitting two stitches onto each face. There you go, problem solved. Now the rest of this is gonna be pretty silly. We just need some kind of gold material for these eyelets and whatever else we got here. Make that metallic. All these little hooks and all these little metal bits also have to be golden. That's what that's gonna look like. We also got the same thing going on over here on the side. We're gonna use the same method to apply the stitches everywhere else. Here's what that's gonna look like. Give me some more gold on this piece right here. That looks beautiful. I've produced this texture right here and I drew that myself by hand. In Blender, I'm going to create a new material for this purse and we can name that purse, texture, whatever. We're gonna drag and drop this shape into that material, plug the color into base color. By default, it will appear like this, but in the UV editor, I'm gonna scale the UV map to something like 25, maybe a little bit less. But doesn't this look like a purse that every other chick has? Let's also add a noise texture node, color ramp, then give me a bump map and plug color into factor, color into height, and normal into normal. And we're gonna crank up the scale of the noise texture, reduce the strength, increase the roughness, and increase the detail. And then just cut off the white color a little bit. And before you know it, your texture is going to start looking like real leather. Now you can adjust the roughness if you wanna. And once we got that texture rolling, let's duplicate this for backup just in case. Apply the solidify modifier. Take this edge segment from the top. Press I to inset, O for outset. Control plus, I to inset it again then alt s to inflate this inner segment a little bit and once we got this new segment at the top here now we're gonna add a new material here assign that that's got to be a little bit darker we can copy this leather setup into this material as well and now i don't really feel like working on this anymore you understand the idea you understand that i'm gonna probably add a couple more textures and a couple more stitches here and fix a few things here and there i've been sitting here all day so i'm not gonna work on this no more if you really want to see some more pictures and some renders of this then join my discord community and let me know i can post some more pictures pictures there. And if you like this video and you want to see more tutorials like this where I model random crazy shit, then like the video, subscribe to the channel because I post every single day. Let me know what you want to see next in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.